Average Joe's Eatery and Patio Bar is North Bay's only year-round lakefront restaurant. On the shores of beautiful Trout Lake, we have been serving delicious food and stunning views since 1999. Indulge in one of our delicious menu items or simply sit with a cocktail in hand and watch the beauty of Trout Lake before your eyes. Check us out online at averagejoes.net or visit us in person at 3501 Trout Lake Road, North Bay. Hey there, I'm Mike the Financial Advisor. When you strip it down to its core and you take away all the industry jargon, I help people solve financial concerns. So if you're concerned that you'll never save enough to retire comfortably, or that your kid is going to graduate post-secondary $40,000 in debt, or maybe even that life is going to take a really unfortunate sideways turn and somebody is going to have to open a GoFundMe page for you and your family, I can help you prevent all of those things from happening. If you want to see how, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Just do a search for Mike the Financial Advisor. You should find me. You rely on your vehicle to take you to the places that matter most to you. So bring your vehicle to the team you can rely on to keep it running at its best. Dave's Automotive Services. Whether you're getting your car or truck ready for the season with a tire change, making sure you're safe on the road with an inspection and certification, or doing your due diligence to keep your vehicle in tip-top shape with regular maintenance, Dave's Automotive Services has you covered. Expert troubleshooting, quality repairs, and time-efficient labor are the three stars of service you can expect when you bring your car or truck to Dave's Automotive Services at 411 Airport Road. Call 705-478-5544 and book your appointment today. Players to Watch is brought to you by Mike the Financial Advisor. If you have financial questions, he has financial answers. On Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at MikeBFA. Good evening and welcome inside the Powassan Sportsplex for game number three of the East Division Finals here in the NOJHL. I'm Courtney Kenny, pleased to be joined by Ben Long as we get set for what should be an exciting game between the Powassan Voodoos and the visiting Timmins Rock. Powassan currently leads the best of seven series, two games to none. They're going to be looking to add on to that lead with a victory here tonight while Timmins is looking to half the lead with a victory here as they drop the first two at home in Timmins. And Powassan won those two games, of course. Uh, we'll have to see if it continues into overtime as Powassan so far has won five games uh, this or this playoff run in overtime uh, with three against Hurst and now two against Timmins. While well, Timmins uh, have swept the Iroquois Falls storm in round one. Again, Courtney Kenny, pleased to be joined by Ben Long in this one. We'll talk about our players to watch right off the hop. And Ben will bring you in to talk about our Timmins player to watch. Our Timmins player to watch, we're going with Harry Clark. There are points leader through the playoffs so far through six games played. He has five goals and five assists, so that's a pretty well-rounded offensive attack out of one man himself. He is. He's very impressive indeed. Uh, Harry Clark as well uh, for the for the Timmins Rock is... Uh, committed to York University. That is correct, yes. He's through 101 points through 56 games this season. 36 goals, 65 assists. Fourth overall for NOJHL scoring. Very in, uh, very uh, special player indeed. On the other side, we have Matthew McMillan through seven playoff games. He has 12 points, eight goals, four assists, and three of those eight goals coming in games one and two of the series, including an overtime winner in game one. Justin Russo with the overtime winner in game two, and also some other housekeeping. Captain of the Voodoo's Alex Little. He will be out the next two games. So tonight and tomorrow as he serves a head-checking suspension from a hit on Harry Clark in game one. So the Voodoo's losing some oops from the back end. And they'll have to move on without that. But that is what it is this time of year. And, of course, you don't get to the East Division Finals without support up and down the lineup, Ben. No, you definitely need a, a deep lineup. Our player to watch, Rick Millen, is on a particularly hot line right now with Wraith Smith, who's been was great in the first round so far this round, as well as Chase Thompson centering that line. Yeah, 12 points for McMillan, 14 for Smith. And we'll go quickly to a uh, free free game presentation from Mike Brito here at the Boston Sportsplex. Standing, standing, 
and welcome Tim Skira for the singing of the American and Canadian National Anthem. And we welcome you back, ladies and gentlemen, to the start of this fantastic game three between the Poisson Voodoo's and the Timmins Rock here in the Poisson Sportsplex. Should be a very exciting game indeed, Ben. I'm very, I'm looking forward to this. Um, bring in some games here. You know, last year the East Division Final took place here against these two teams. Timmins swept that series four games to none. Also, I would like to apologize to anyone at home right now my voice only just came back today, <laughs> and I am on a lot of lozenges right now. Uh, there was no way I was missing this game, so uh, there, was a, there might be a bit of coughing, so bear with me on this one as I'm just getting over a bit of a bug that's been going around uh, for everyone, it seems. We've had a strict diet of uh, soup and uh, tea for you lately, and yeah, well, get I had, you back to shape a little bit I had here. Mr. Noodles and, a, and some tea just before uh, when warm-up was going on. Yep. So. As we get set for the opening face-off here at the Sportsplex, Timmins in their sharp white jerseys, the road ones, I love those jerseys, going left to right here to start this first period. And the Voodoos in their home greens are going right to left as quickly it's into Timmins territory, but it's a delayed offside, so Timmins will pick up the puck. Clark with loads of speed through the neutral zone, takes a shot, blocked aside by DiRocolo. McMillan gives chase, however, Cadio Frederick sends it back out. Case near side to Smith. Ray Smith, the super rookie here for the Voodoos, the chomps and Thompson with a shot. And that one's stopped by Patrick Boivin. Starting goaltenders here today in the Poas and Sportsplex between these two teams. In that in Timmins, number 31, Patrick Boivin. Uh, he's 2-0, although I don't think that's updated correctly. He has a 1.80 goals against average and a 940 save percentage. On the other side, Daniel Duracolo. Through seven games, he's 6-1 with a 293 goals against average and a 917 save percentage. As the All-American line is out there right now, Cameron Lemke bats it back down the ice. Dylan McElhaney and Ryan Patrick from Pittsburgh. And Zach Turner from the most American-sounding town in the world, Eagle, Colorado. You can't go wrong with that. As a sent back in, Boivin with the puck behind his net. Plays it around. Near side. Good pickoff there by Turner, but he quickly gives it back. Now it's Patrick with the puck. Patrick turns, sends it in cross ice. Took a bit of a different bounce there as Cadio Fred Rip picks it up. And now down the ice back in is MacArthur. MacArthur takes a shot. That one hit a stick. And it goes up and out of play here at the Sportsplex. And we'll get a stoppage of play here. A minute and 11 seconds into the first period. Yeah, we've had a fury of action so far. 
Puck going both ways. First shot is in favor of Timmins Rock, and that one didn't quite make it to the net, but was deflected up over. Oh, it looks like Poisson's being awarded a shot as well, tied 1-1. Face off to the near side into Rockalow's end. Will Rive with the puck, bounces it back in. Case battling for it as well in the near side corner. They're both down on the ice. Now Mike McLean with it. Mike McLean from Cape Breton down the ice. Sends it, wills it his way. Now Will Rive back in battling for it as it comes nearly out. As now the puck down the ice is Beard. He sends it in and he runs into Reese Smetham. Good to see him back in the lineup as he had been Hobbled by an injury a little bit in the first round. Now Mike McLean with Tucker Shields. Shields down the ice, gets it to Smetham. Smetham tried to will it down the ice, but gives it away. Now near side to Beard. Beard walks in, takes a shot. Duracolo with the stop, bats it into the corner. Poole with the puck now. Bodies are flying. Beard and Case both into Duracolo's net. We'll get a delayed penalty here as both referees have their arms up. And I believe the first penalty of game number three is going to go to Beard. So Beard was in the box. I wasn't sure if they were calling Poisson on the end because Beard clearly shoved Case into Duracolo and fell into the net himself. And as you would expect, some voodoos took exception to that play. Yeah. But it looks like the refs both decided that it was, in fact, just Beard who was at fault. Thomas Beard in the box. So we'll see Poisson on the power play. Near side face off. Cameron Lemke is playing defense this game. He's usually a forward out there for the faceoff, but Timmons wins it. Down the ice with speed now. Sent in, but is blocked by Ricci. Ring trying to chase after it. Smith gets to it, sends it around far side for Case. Case just sends it right back behind his net to Ricci. Ricci behind the net. Looks for options. Goes for a bit of a skate with it now as he turns and drops it back to Ray Smith. Ray Smith takes a chance as he sends it into the end boards. Now rimmed around by Lemke. Thompson gives it back to Smith. Smith with the shot. Oh, near side. That would have been a gorgeous chance for the Voodoos had Lemke been able to corral a sharp angle shot on net. And it's knocked back out to Smith, who's able to keep it in. Now Thompson, far side to Lemke. Lemke goes around near side to Ray Smith. Smith with a shot. That one stopped by some bodies out front. Now it's back to the blue line and hops over Carson Ricci's stick. And down the ice to Rockalo out to play the puck in the near side faceoff circle. Leaves it as we're under a minute left on the power play. If you're just joining us here, well, we have a bit of a problem with the stanchion here, so we can't see how much time exactly is on the away penalty. And now Jack Kelly going the other way. Kelly takes a shot, kicked aside by Duracolo. Patrick tried to corral it. Still on the power play for Powassan. Again, less than a minute left. McLean from behind his neck goes for a skate. Skates through. Two white jerseys, and then he saw two more and dumped it in, chasing after it. McLean on the near side wall. Sends it around for Thompson, or for Shields. Now McElhaney tried to send it out front, but is picked off by Timmons. And down the ice goes Clark. Clark walks in. Clark around. He would have had a wide open net had he been able to get to the front, but a good stick there knocked the puck away. Shields. Behind the net now, Boivin gets to it. Boivin passes it back. Shields picks it off. We're back to five on five as Beard's back out. And now McMillan with the puck. Goes cross ice. It's a Rotundo. Rotundo with a shot blocked away by Boivin. Now Jackson Smith takes a shot and is blocked by Timmons. Down the ice. Timmons goes. Wells walks in. Tried to get around his man. He does. Goes cross ice. No one was there for Timmons to corral that one. And Powassan sends it down the ice. Poole gets to it. Poole with the puck. Battling for it, gives it to Thomas Sefton, the former Voodoo. Now Lemke picks it up in the neutral zone. Sends it over for Ricci, and it's near side for Caleb Dawson. Dawson takes a hit. Battling for it on the near side. Caden Dubroy in there as well. Poole battling for it for his side. Now the puck back out for Timmons. And down the ice they go as MacArthur sends it in. Duracolo leaves it. And T Timmons picks it up briefly before Ricci gets to it. Now Justin Russo, game two overtime hero. Tried to flip the puck out and it's out of play here with a stoppage. Speaking of overtime heroes, we've had two games go in favor of Boston. So they're up two nothing in the series, but both have been a result of overtime wins. So it has been an incredibly contested series. It just, Boston's managed to go the extra way once it gets into overtime. 
Yeah, it's almost like they're uh, finding another gear come overtime. This whole playoffs, they've really done that. Yeah, we saw a couple here against the Hearst in the Hearst series that were important. Wraith Smith tried to get around Nyman, but Nyman knocked him off the puck. Now far side battling for it. McMillan in there as well. Thompson comes in for support. Thompson looks, just throws it towards Boivin. Boivin covers it up. Worth noting in this series, the lone player on the Voodoo side to wear both a Rock and Voodoo's jersey is recent Anna Maria College commit Dylan McElhinney, who played for the Rock in 2021-22 before the Pittsburgh product headed back to the United States for the next two seasons before a trade to the Voodoo's this year from the NA. HL's Johnston Tomahawks in November. On the other side, the Rock have Jack Kelly and Thomas Sefton, who both wore Voodoo's green. Kelly was trading the offseason to Coburg before he found his way back to the NOJHL. And in December, and Sefton played this season with Pelham. And the Goge, and he played, he has two points in two contests being an affiliate uh, for the Rock so far. As we just mentioned him, Sfarich for the chance. And that one's turned aside by a body. Now battling on the near side. Turner gets the stick on it and knocks it down the ice. However, he can't quite get it far. As now the puck back in deep into Voodoo's territory. Patrick rims around, was looking for Clark. Clark over skates it. Now McElhinney on the attack. Dylan McElhinney walks in, leaves it for Turner. And a good back check there by Timmons negates that chance. That was a crafty little play there by Dylan McElhinney to leave the puck. Now Poole battling for it, Lemke. Tried to get the puck away. Bodies colliding in the neutral zone here. Ricci sends it down the ice. It hits a body, so no icing. Down the ice again for Timmons through the neutral zone. Hit thrown there by Lemke as he sends the puck back down. As those two, him and Beard, get acquainted with each other here. But we'll get an icing call against Powassan. And that was certainly not a pleasant hello between Beard and Lemke. They quite in a more violent sense met there, but there is a lot of familiarity, as you point out, between these two teams, and that can, you know, sometimes be like, oh, they're friends of ours, but once you're on the ice, there's no more friends. Yeah, all's fair in love and war, they say. As a chance to throw it out front by Beard, doesn't quite go his way, and Duracolo picks that one off and covers it. And both goalies have looked fantastic tonight. Boivin was pulled from the last game but is back in to play this game. And he's looked solid. Duracolo is back in his prime shape that we've seen him at before and hope that he continues that. Puck won by the Voodoo's but is quickly given to Timmons in the slot chance. And that one goes wide of the net. Puck back to the point, flip back in towards the net by Beard. And now Shields battling for it, sends it right back behind the net. Rotundo gets to it. Sends it right back around, it nearly came out. It's on the back of the net right now as both teams are battling for it before the referees blow it dead. 12.53 left here in the first period, nothing, nothing between these two teams. And I gotta say, oh, there's some jostling after the whistle between a couple guys, but the refs don't see it and goes unnoticed, but I know from hearing you talk, there's no love lost towards Timmins and you're quite happy to see a two nothing lead so far. Hey, as you know, it's the first one to four, so we'll have to see what happens here, but this rivalry was something else uh, pre-pandemic, and that's going to go for offside against Timmins. Um, but yeah, this rivalry was something, the 2019-20 season, these were the top two teams in the NOJHL, and it was going to be quite the playoff matchup that we got robbed of during the pandemic. Um, and we'll get to a bit more of the playoff history between these two teams, but yeah, back then it was it was really fun to watch these two teams go to battle. Uh, heroes on both sides, villains on both as well for I'm sure both fan bases as Ray Smith gets a chance thrown on net and that one was tipped towards the net but turned aside by Boivin. Now Lemke sends it in deep. Boivin sends the puck in. Cadio Frederet up the ice quickly. Had a chance to talk to him at the NOJHL Showcase. Now, McMillan with some speed, takes a shot, kicked aside by Boivin. Smith nearly got the puck away from MacArthur, but MacArthur got it down the ice. Now Case up the ice for Thompson. Thompson for McMillan out front, looking for Smith. Smith taking off the puck as he tried to shoot. As this line's buzzing here. Now is a two on one for 
Timmons, MacArthur with a chance, stopped by Duraclo, rebound chance as well. And the goaltender got a stick up in the mask and knocks it off his face as now McMillan and Thompson are in there with Wells battling it out after the whistle. What a great chance there for Timmons and what a great sequence of saves by Daniel Duraclo. That was a great little play. And there was a little extra jab thrown at Duraclo after he had the puck covered and that's what led to that little scrum there. It was actually Smith was the first one back and grabbed the guy and said, we don't accept that around here. No. And you know, that's as a coach what you want to see. You want to see your guys sticking up for the other guys, especially your goalie when you have such a hot goaltender. You would hate to see him go down like we've seen in North Bay recently. Yeah, Dom DiVincentis out with an injury. Hopefully he's able to come back soon, but Mike McIver's done more than his fair share. Holding down the fort for North Bay against Kingston in the first round. North Bay able to beat the Frontenacs in five games. And now they wait to see who they play in the next round, although it's likely Sudbury. And as I said to a couple of parents at the Battalion game, I've been waiting 10 years for this series as the puck is knocked out of play. But speaking of pre, uh, previous series, the Voodoo's in 2017 marched through the Rock and four straight en route to the franchise's first NOJHL title. However, in 2018, the underdog Rock upset the Voodoo's in the NOJHL East semifinals for the first round, defeating the Voodoo's who were heavy favorites after a 94 point regular season. And they lost to Timmins in the first round. They only had, Timmins that year only had 44 regular season points in six games. They won four games to two with a dramatic overtime victory for the Rock in Timmins. As Timmins here would love to continue that trend as they were able to sweep Powassan last year en route to their first NOJHL title. Picked off now by Dubroy in his own zone and he just shovels the puck down the ice. That should go for icing here. Uh, that game, the series winning goal for Timmins in 2018 was ironically scored by former Voodoo's forward Tyler Gilberts, who I also remember quite a bit from that 2019-20 season. Derek Sagan as well, a great player for Timmins. Yeah, and speaking of other familiarities, Timmins Rock head coach Brandon Perry was coached by Voodoo's coach Peter Goulet in Kingston. Yeah, the, uh, the ties run deep between these two teams. Taddeo Frederick with a shot blocked by Duraclo and he covers it up. But that's what happens when you're consistently the top two teams in the East uh, Division here in the NOJHL. As we get some more jostling here after the whistle. You know, you gotta think that there's gonna be a good, healthy rivalry and also, you know, some ties between the two teams. Yeah, and I mean, the hockey world in Canada especially and in Northern Ontario is a small world. There's, you know, it's very much a niche market. So, you're going to have a lot of that running like the coach coach, the other coach. Yeah. How many times can you say coach in a sentence? <laughs> Peter Goulet also coached his assistant, Josh uh, Hardiman. That's true. He's the coach of coaches. He, he literally is. Great hockey mind, of course. As now we're going to get a penalty here, I believe, against Will Rive. And a late shot towards the net by Shields uh, did not go unnoticed by some Timmins players on ice. So Rive is going to go off to the box. And this is one thing if you're Pawas and you do not want to give Timmins too many opportunities on the man advantage because they have been deadly all year long. They definitely have their fair share of firepower on their team. And to give them that extra time and space that you get on the power play is just not something you can afford to be doing on a regular basis. Coming into the far side of Duraclo. Now we're going to see how much Pawas misses Alex Little as he's their top penalty killer. Russo up there as well. He's out right now. Puck quickly down the ice, but back into Voodoo's territory. As Farage gets it back for Clark. Clark, near side. Puck knocked over the, off the stick of the Rock player there. And it's back to the point. Russo pushing his man out of the zone. Dropped his stick, picks it back up. Now Clark with a chance. Stopped by Duraclo with a big glove save. 24 seconds gone in the power play. A minute 36 left. That was a bullet of a shot from the top of the circle there that Duraclo just picked out of the air. That was a beautiful glove save. But on the note of Justin Russo, a first year player in the league, to be given such responsibility as being on the first penalty kill line is really speaks to his ability out there. Clark near side, as they walk out, try to get a secondary chance, somehow it stays out. As the Voodoo's are able to block that one down. Now Mike McLean with the puck, he turns around to kill some more time. 
Goes back into his own zone for Case. Voodoo's playing keep away here as Case sends it finally down the ice. As I don't know how Timmons did not score on that play there. Bodies everywhere. Must have hit somebody in front of the net. Duraclo had his legs stretched over and he might have got it, but I can't say for sure. Now around behind the net. Timmons with possession. Back to the point. Another chance blocked by Ricci. Back in. The referee skates got in the way as Ricci now battles on the far side as Patrick comes in for support. Wells in there as well. Now the puck comes out. It's a little mini Timbits game sorry. where the whole team is over in the one area. <laughs> puck now back out. Nyman looked to send the puck out front and nearly came out banking off the end boards. And now Clark going for a skate. 28 seconds left on the man advantage. Clark far side to his man. Back to Nyman. Nyman. As a stick is knocked out of the hands of Turner, lots of fans here in Powassan not appreciative of that, but it doesn't cost Powassan anything. No fans, and you could hear that come from the bench as well. That should have been called a slashing penalty, but it was not noticed by the refs at the time, and Play on. the ref went over and just talked to Peter Goulet and said, yeah, you're not getting a call here. <laughs> Low in for the draw. Shields in for the hometown side. And uh, we're going to get a redo of the draw here. 8.55 left in this first period. 19 seconds remain on the man advantage here for Timmons. Will Reve in the box. As now the puck comes out, Malkalini gets to it and sends it down the ice. And that should end all meaningful time here on the power play for Timmons as Malkalini goes slamming hard into the boards and now he's hobbling to get off. Romanuk with the shot. That one's saved by Duraclo. Another chance in front. Turned aside by the netminder. The penalty is over. Back to five on five. We'll have to see if how McElhaney is. There's now some hard hits being leveled on the far side. Lowe tried to get the puck out. Still comes around. Timmons from the near side. And the puck is out for McMillan. McMillan tried to send it out. Nyman gets to it. Now it's in tight for Timmons. However, Kelly can't get to it. Poole back to the point. Sends it in. Kelly went cross ice. And McMillan picks it up. McMillan. Stretch pass for Rive. Rive walks in, takes a shot, stopped by Boivin. On a little slap by Rive from outside of the faceoff dots. Now Poole gets it down the ice. Good chance there, sharp angle by Timmons. And McMillan picks it up in his own zone. Matthew McMillan with some speed, gets around a couple of Timmons players. Wow, continues on. McMillan, cross ice, and put it into the skates of Thompson. What a play by Matthew McMillan just to get the puck down the ice. Now Clark with some speed of his own going the other way. Leaves it. Good chance here. Blocked by Ricci. Big block there for Carson Ricci. As that was a good shooting lane for Timmons. Now Ray Smith down the ice. Ray Smith knocked off his feet by Anderson as he returns the favor by throwing another hit. Timmons back down into Powassan territory but is sent down by Lemke to Patrick. Patrick. Up the ice for Smith. Smith tries to chip it across the neutral zone to pick it up. And now it's in for Jackson Smith. And Jackson Smith sends it down, but it hits a Timmons player for Kelly. Kelly has his pocket picked by Jackson Smith, and he's just going to send it cross ice and get Caleb Dawson to chase after it. Near side now. Timmons got it back to Jackson Smith. They tried to throw it towards the net for Ryan Patrick. And now the puck sent down, but not far as Mason Rotundo picks it up. Rotundo going for a skate. Rotundo cross ice, they score! Zach Turner and the Voodoo's are in flight. It's one to nothing. That was a beautiful play by Turner as he hypes up the crowd here in Boston. But that was an even better play by Rotundo to get the zone entry. The play that he made with the puck get through there and got a pre pa perfect pass over for Patrick just to knock it in the net there. Zach Turner's third of the postseason. What a goal, what a time. As now McElhaney is being helped off the ice. We don't like to see that. He scored a big overtime uh, goal for the Voodoos in game number four against Hurst. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Hopefully he's able to come back. Mike McMillan now. As put through games one and two, Timmons both or went up two nothing both times. 
This is the first actual lead Colossum has had in the series. That's interesting considering they won both games. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Now going down the ice with some speed that was Ring. I always really like Ring and Wells on Timmins. They're very fast players, very shifty players. The, the, they're amongst the much uh, feared offensive weapons that are on this Timmins team. Walks in, takes a shot blocked aside by DiRocolo. Ricci battling with his man on the far side. Now Russo comes away with it. Nice play by Russo to gain some space. Now the puck down the ice nearly found DeBroy, but it was picked off by Timmins. Farich now for Romanuk. Romanuk, the former U16 trapper. Teammates with Mason Rotundo last year. Puck out front, and that one somehow stayed out by Tarakolo as Timmins getting some good chances here in this first period. Harry Clark sends across ice. Dawson's going to pick it up. And Dawson tries to send it out, but it's blocked in by Timmins. Powassan can't seem to get it out of their zone right now. Now the puck to Lemke. Lemke's just going to slow things down before he sends things around. And it's still kept in by Timmins. Now finally out mercifully for Powassan. As Caden Dubroy gets to it, sends it down the ice and goes off for a change. Timmins with possession in their own zone. Battling for the, or looking to see where to go with the puck, I should say. And now it's down the ice. Nyman sends it in for Romanuk. And puck near side, but he's taken off the play. Now McMillan, now it's Ray Smith, one-on-one -on -one with Nyman. Ray Smith knocked off the puck himself as he still battles for it. And the Italian prospect has been impressive all season long for a 16-year-old in the Junior A League. Romanuk as well, fair share of offensive scoring opportunities for Timmins. Now Thompson off his skate and down the ice. We'll have to talk a little bit more about Romanuk and Rotundo as they have a big date coming up here soon for their hockey careers. McMillan with the puck. Sends it in from the neutral zone and is blocked down by Boivin and that should bring us to our mid-period break here. So we'll be back with more Powassan Voodoo's hockey on the other side of this. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by Average Joe's Eatery. Average Joe's, where we want your experience here to be a happy one. 3501 Trout Lake Road. And if you're just joining us here, it's 1-0 Powassan for the first, well, 12 minutes or so of the first period. I think we're 16 minutes into this period. Oh, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Time flies when you're having fun. Uh, I know that because we're in the first the mid-period break, and it's never the middle of the period when we get to it. It, it never is, that's true. Uh, as we're talking about Romanuk and Mason Rotundo, they both played U16 AAA Trappers last season. Uh, their rivals, of course, this season. Romanuk of the Rock will face Voodoo's defender, Mason Rotundo. The two 16-year-olds have had solid rookie seasons. We just saw Rotundo with a nice assist on the game's opening goal. Uh, and are on the radar as eligible players for the U16 OHL priority selection taking place April 12th and 13th. Romanuk netted 23 goals and 34 assists for 57 points this season for the Rock, while Rotundo scored two goals with 11 assists for 13 points in 52 regular season games for the Voodoos. They're going to be nice additions to whatever OHL team calls their name in a week or so. That's for certain. That they they've both been great players this year. I know from seeing Rotundo a bunch, seeing him in a bunch of action, he's been stellar as a as a younger defenseman in the league. Blocked out from the Voodoo. Somehow Blovin keeps it out. My goodness, what a save by the goaltender for Timmins. As the Voodoo's made something out of nothing on that face-off opportunity. Puck was shot in from the point, off the end boards, bounced out in front of the goaltender, and Powassan just couldn't shovel it home. What that, a chance. That was a combination of great defensive play by Timmins and misfortune for Powassan not to be able to get a stick on that one. Beard now through the neutral zone. Good stick there by Lemke. Keeps him off the puck as the two once again renew acquaintances here. That's going to be a battle to keep an eye on all game long. Reese Smetham cross ice for Shields. Shields with the puck. Sends it down the ice. That should go for icing. And it does. So now Timmins will have an offensive zone draw against Powassan. And there's been a few of those plays where Powassan trying to get out their end off the boards to a player ahead and it just seems to not bounce quite right and ends up all the way down the ice with a face off back in their own zone. 
329 left here in this first period. Shots on goal are 13 to 11 in favor of the Rock. Lemke sends the puck out. No, he does not, as is kept in. Now Clark with the puck. Clark sends it in deeper. Shields picks it up on the far side half hole and tries to will it out. He does. Was looking for Rive, but couldn't quite get it. Now Timmons send it back in. Good chance there. Turned aside by DiRoccolo as the puck is dropped down in front. Turner, the goal scorer here for Powassan, chasing after it. Clark with the puck now over near side to Romanuk. Romanuk with the shot blocked by DiRoccolo. Rebound clogged up by Powassan. Lemke sends it in or sends it around. Now Romanuk picks it up. Romanuk with the puck. Goes, or takes a shot, that one's blocked by Lemke. And now Poole with the puck in the neutral zone. Russo picks it up. Romanuk takes a bit of a run at him, but he's able to get the puck down the ice. Now he picks it back up and sends it in, although it's off the meshing and out of play. So and this, now we'll get another stoppage here with 2.29 left. And this game has certainly not been without its physicalities. As playoff series go on, you get some built up aggression towards the other players of that guy did this or that last game or the game before and competition takes over as well. Just hoping that everyone keeps their aggressions in check and we can have a relatively penalty free game. Well, Timmons uh, or Powassan was one of the least penalized teams, believe it or not, in the regular season. Believe it or not. As now the puck rolls in, Duracolo covers it up. I'm gonna take some uh, time here to say a huge thank you. Uh, we weren't told who the person was, but they delivered us some uh, butter tarts before the game, and then they said it's from a grandmother of one of the Voodoo's players. They wouldn't say who. We, we were told it was a secret, and we weren't allowed to know. Yeah, but so we, if, if you sent us butter tarts, we thank you, because we love butter tarts. We do, that's one thing here on the front line we absolutely love. It's now two on one developing here for Pawas, and Ray Smith walks in. He takes up, he stops up, takes the shot, Boiv in with the save. As Powassan getting a couple of more good looks here as the game goes on now, Chase Thompson mixing things up in front of the net as well as he ran in looking for a rebound chance. And anyone who knows us, Courtney knows, we don't agree on too many things. We agree on, we love the Voodoos and we love <laughs> Butter Tarts. I don't know how many other there are other than that. Um, we can agree our play yesterday in Rodog was oh, pretty good. Yeah, we beat Cassie and uh, it was goal scored on Harrison, our social media guy. Yeah. I got a hat trick to in that game. You did. <laughs> Three in a row. <laughs> Just suit me up, coach. I'm ready to play. Puck setting, He's cross ice. <laughs> got you, Fred Red, with the puck. <laughs> we'll never let Harrison live that one down. Or Brad. Yeah. Brad loves to win. We love to beat Brad. He'll be doing color tomorrow. That should be fun. Now Timmons with a chance. Fan on the chance. Caden Dubroy knocked down off the puck. As now the puck sent right over towards the Voodoo's bench. And the coaching staff had to do a bit of a dance there to get out of the way. In their playing days, I'm sure they would have been all over blocking that shot, but... Yeah, come once, on, Josh Dale. Once you take the jersey off and put the suit on, blocking shots isn't something you try to do anymore. Yeah. I don't know, I'll have to rip Josh Dale next time I see him about that one. Tell him to be set a good example for those <laughs> trappers he'll be coaching next exactly. year. Exactly, U18 trapper coach next year, good for Josh. Good feeder system here for Powassan too. Certainly is. As now, Ta Turner with a chance, that one whistles wide of the net. Patrick battling for it as it comes back out to the neutral zone. Still no McElhaney back from the locker room. We'll have to get an update on him as the game goes on. Those are two important players that the Voodoo's have lost for this game, if that's the case. Dylan McElhaney and Alex Little, who's serving game one of two of a suspension. Now the puck comes through the crease. Turner sends it down the ice. Ryan Patrick gets to it. And he loses the handle on it now, and Timmons ships it right back out. Russo sends it right back into Timmons territory. As it was a delayed offside, the Voodoo's could not touch it. Now Timmons setting up behind the net. 35 seconds remaining here in this first period. Clark with some speed down the ice. Walks in, had a good chance there, puts it just wide. He was looking for someone to pass it to. Now Rive sends the puck back down through the neutral zone. Cadio Frederick plays it out, sends it back in. 
And now Case gets to it on the near side. Case stops up, looks for options, gives it to Shields. Shields, far side to Smetham. Now Smetham for Rive. Rive gets a stick on it. He nearly had a chance there, but it was knocked away by Timmons. Five seconds remain here. Clark with a last chance rush. Takes a shot, that one's blocked by McLean. And we've come to the end of our first period here. Powassan leads one to nothing after 20 minutes of play. And now we have some more jostling down by where the Voodoo's go off the ice with Clark and McLean. And you definitely get the vibe, Ben, before we go to break. These two teams not big fans of one another. No, they definitely are not. And if I was Clark, I don't know if McLean is the one I'd be going after on Powassan's bench. Yeah, he's got about two feet on you. Yeah. A little bit scary. He's, you know, shares a name with someone who's been known to take on some heroics as well, so... <laughs> All right, Ben, your final thoughts here on this first period before we go to break. This was a great first period. Both teams played really well. The goaltendings looked really good. The only goal was on a play that really was such a great cross-ice pass that Boavin didn't even have a chance. That You can't fault him on it. And Duraco's made some big saves where you wouldn't have faulted him if they went by. So it's been a great game so far. Lots of offense, but you mostly pretty smart defense as well. And yeah, that's that's really a it's great hockey so far. One nothing Powassan after 20 minutes of play. Shots on goal favor Timmins 15 to 12. And we'll be back with more on the other side of this intermission. Meals are a special time for families to gather, share their day, and spend quality time together. Those dinners are made extra special when you add tropical produce found in the markets and grocery stores that carry La Huerta imports. La Huerta knows the importance of family, so they know which quality products make the best quality meals for your customers, whether it be Mexican Haas avocados, Brazilian figs, Ecuadorian red dragon fruit, or something just as exotic and special. To get your supply of the best tropical produce at competitive prices with Brands Buyers Trust, contact La Huerta Imports at 705-752-1478. Barry! Huh? I told you not to be scaring the customers. Hey, Barry! Come on in for a bite. And bring Brianna with you. Ready to embark on an electrifying adventure? Look no further than the Mitsubishi Outlander. Available in gas or PHEV. The SUV that redefines excellence. Recently awarded the best midsize utility vehicle in Canada for 2023 by Ajac. This bold and sophisticated SUV delivers advanced performance, safety, and tech, plus peace of mind. With its standard super all-wheel control and the best warranty in the business. With red-hot deals and plenty in stock, your award-winning drive starts with the Mitsubishi Outlander.
Why is Northern Honda servicing more cars of all makes and models? Let's count the ways. One, our state-of-the-art facility has award-winning technicians. Two, Northern Honda has the lowest tire price guarantee, no matter what you drive. Three, the lowest synthetic oil change guarantee, and every fifth oil change is free for all makes and models. Plus, new Honda buyers get brake pads for life. See the service difference at Northern Honda, 1250 Seymour, beside Home Depot. Community engagement is one of our core focuses at McDonald's. The key is finding the right people who are passionate about the same things we are, helping kids be kids. McDonald's proudly supports local organizations such as the North Bay Regional Health Center Foundation, Big Brothers Big Sisters, One Kids Place, the Children's Aid Society, and Ronald McDonald House Charities. Stop by McDonald's on 1500 Fisher Street, North Bay to see how we can serve you and the community every day. And we welcome you inside the Powassan Sportsplex for the soon-to-be start of the second period between the Timmins Rock and Powassan Voodoo. Powassan currently holds a 1-0 lead in this game, and they hold a 2-0 series lead in this best-of-seven series after winning games one and two up at the McIntyre Arena in Timmins. Or if you want to get real uh, technical, Schumacher, I yeah, suppose. Yeah, we learned that the other day. I didn't know that was a thing. No, you didn't. I mean, I know Schumacher's a thing, and it's basically part of Tim Inns and all that. I didn't realize that Tim and Tim Inns Rock actually played in Schumacher, though. Yep, they do, and uh, I've always been told that the Mac is one of the nicest arenas that you'll get to at this level. As uh, Dylan McElhinney back out on the ice there as well to start the period. He went down with a bit of a scary-looking injury in the first period, but good to see him back out on the ice. Uh, but, yeah, he, he actually is the one who told me that you got to go to the Mac. I mean, he's confirmed what other people have said that yeah. I should go to the MAC. But as somebody who played there in Timmins, uh, he was a big proponent there, he says, of going to the MAC and checking out games there. It's always a fun time to go up to Timmins, they tell me. Hopefully we don't get another op opportunity to this year, though. Well, we'll have to see how the games play out, of course. It isn't as big a road trip as what the Voodoo's just had, though, up to Hurst. No, that was a... Uh that was an adventure for sure on their part. Almost an eight hour road trip. As now we got mothers of players running up here. Oh my goodness. I can't <laughs> even stand in my spot. Holy geez. We really need to cordon off our broadcast area. Yeah, I know. I'm just giving her a hard time, I guess. But but we do. But we do, yep. <laughs> <laughs> As we get set here for the start of the second period for the opening draw. As that. All-American line has been joined now by Justin Russo to start this period. As McElhinney again had gone down with an injury in the first place back out there. Powassan in their home greens are going left to right this period. Timmins in their road whites are going right to left. As now Turner with the puck gets it back to the point to Case, but it's knocked away from him and down the ice. That should go for icing, and it does. I have to say, Ben, I, I'm not a fan of white jerseys. I love these Timmins Rock jerseys. They they are really nice. I like how the red and yellow, like the maroon and yellow play together. Is that technically maroon? Yeah. Okay. We're not, we're, again, maroon comes up again. <laughs> Two years in a row. <laughs> we're not fans of maroon uh, last year after how things ended against the Pinero Peets no. in the Eastern Conference Finals in the OHL for the North Bay Battalion. Yeah, last year maroon did both the teams we do in. That's true. Did us dirty, is now a chance there by Timmons, they score! Timmons stuck it in past Rockolo as that puts the fans here from Timmons into a bit of a frenzy. Mason Sfarich with his fifth of the postseason stuck it past Daniel DiRocolo, 1-1, 33 seconds in. And as we were talking about off camera, one thing Pawson's done really well this off season is put pucks on net and go for the rebounds, and that's exactly what Timmins just did and were rewarded for their effort. 
Big chance there for Timmons. They got the job done. And it's a whole new hockey game here. 19-20 with left in the second period, 1-1. Albert with the puck, down the ice. It's knocked in and Shields chasing after it. Tucker Shields, it's taken away far side. It's now down the ice. Reese Smetham gets it to Will Rive. Will Rive dances around his man, picks it up in the near, near side. Rive gets it back to Ricci. Ricci pinches it back in. And now battling for it is Timmons as they pick it up in their own zone. And it's back out to the neutral zone. Ricci sends it right back in. But it was offside for the Voodoo, so they couldn't touch it. Near side now, Albert with the puck. Right back down through the neutral zone. Picked off by Dawson. Now Justin Russo has it. Russo skates the puck in. Dawson goes after it. Battling for it. Now on the far side, Russo gets to it. And sends it right back into the corner. Albert, Dawson, we're new acquaintances again. They've been against each other this whole shift so far. And Dubroy knocks his man into the boards. Now back through the neutral zone, Wells. Carries the puck in. Wells on the near side. Skates around. Back to Sefton at the point. Sefton sends it right back in, rims it around. Poole sends it in deep. And now Rotundo with the puck. Mason Rotundo tried to get out of his zone as he takes a hit. And is still in to Voodoo's territory, but they finally get it out. Now Dubroy with the puck. Dubroy over skates it. He would have had a golden opportunity there. Caden Dubroy does have separation speed. And he's going to see that one in his nightmares later as he just over skated the puck. Now Reiner in with it as that's going to go offside against Timmons. So we'll get a stoppage here. Again, 1 1. Timmons just tying it up here early this period. And they're finally making good on all the chains that they've had this game. No short of them with 16 shots. Boston has 12 for the score to be tied at 1 to 1. Is a display of good goaltending on both ends for sure. Yeah, Patrick Boivin and Daniel Duracolo, they definitely came to play so far. Game one and two, both ending three to two in overtime in favor of the Voodoos. Now Mike McLean with the puck through the neutral zone. McLean sends the puck in deep. Puck goes around the end wall. McLean in the slot, takes a shot, puts it wide. Thompson with the puck, sends it around the end wall. McMillan on the near side half wall. Tried to get around his man, but now it's the case. Case flutters it in towards the net. And that'll go for tripping against Timmons. So now Powassan will get their second power play opportunity here and a chance to retake the lead. And I know they're looking to make, to re-get that, gain that lead. Though they haven't had very many in this series and it's worked out okay for them so far, I'm sure they would much rather be playing with a one or two goal lead than with a one or two goal deficit like they have for most of the game so far. Ray Smith. Tried to skate through the middle, but it's picked off by Timmons. Might as well get another chance here for Smith as he goes for the skate down the neutral zone. And sent in by Timmons. Lemke has it off over his stick and down the ice. Karakalo to play it. Leaves it for Lemke. Lemke now goes for a bit of a skate. And he just walks right through the neutral zone. And he walks in deep. Lemke back to the point for Case. Case sends it towards the net. Thompson nearly had a tip as Case is able to stop it. Or Boivin is able to stop it. And we'll get a stoppage to play here. And that was a great zone entrance of carrying the puck all the way down the ice, finding space through the neutral zone, cycling around the net, moving the puck off to a teammate. Unfortunately for Poisson, it didn't materialize to very much more, but that's exactly what you want to be doing on the power play. Tucker Shields in for the draw. It's won by Timmons as Albert gets it far side. And Timmons sends it down the ice now. McMillan chasing after it. McMillan in his own zone. Chips it over to McLean. McLean in his own zone now goes for a skate. As he goes through four Timmons players, gets it in deep for McMillan. McMillan, near side. Now to the far side. Sends it back in. Patrick gets to it. Patrick lost the puck and it's right back down into Voodoo's territory now. Barocolo out to play the puck, gets it up quickly for McElhaney. McElhaney, oh, it's out of his reach. He would have had a breakaway on a bad change there by Timmons. 
Good play by DiRocolo. As now Patrick chasing after the puck. It floats out of the zone. Less than a minute left on the man advantage. Not many shots by the Voodoo's on this power play. Carson Ricci leaves it for McElhinney. McElhinney out front for Shields. Blocked there by Timmons. Good chance by Powassan. Probably the best chance they've had this power play. Now Ricci sends it towards the net. Boivin stops it. Far side, McMillan out front. Oh, it's batted away by Timmons. And down the ice now, Shields in a race with Clark. Clark in, takes a shot, goes wide. Good chance there. And an even better back check by Shields, who is out of gas. Back to five on five now is Lemke with the puck. Lemke near side, throws it out front. Case nearly tipped that one in. Lemke now leaves it behind the net. McMillan, or McLean gets to it. Thompson also looking for it, but it's back to Lemke at the point. Lemke floats it back in. Behind the net, Thompson battling for possession. As in comes Ray Smith. Smith with the puck. Goes for a skate to the far side. Turns it right back towards the net. No one was there, but it rolled back in on Boivin. And the goaltender's just going to cover it up and slow things down. And the first half of that power play wasn't necessarily a great example of what you want to see a team doing, but the second half, they really settled it down and got to controlling the puck a lot better and got a few shots on net. I think it was past the first minute before they even got their first shot, but they got three over the time of the whole thing, and that's what they want to be doing. Hopefully next time, for their sake, it'll uh, have different results. In on the far side of Boivin, Russo looking for the draw. And it's won by the Voodoo's Dawson. Got that in off the draw. Stopped by Boivin. Big save there by the goaltender on a great chance by Caleb Dawson off the draw. Those quick little ones like that where it's in close are often hard to do because the goalie's not ready for the shot. He's not down in his butterfly. So when the shot comes in, you got to either get in your butterfly really quickly, preemptively almost, or be ready for a high shot up off the shoulders or head. Another draw, knocked down by Timmons as Russo battling for it as the puck now on the far side. Wells comes away with it, gets around his man as now Timmons has a three on two going the other way. Low to Albert, Albert with the shot, stopped by DiRocolo. And now we'll get an offensive zone draw here for Timmons. And on that play there, Dubroy, who was one of the furthest pinned into the offensive zone, managed to get his way back on a back check and throw a hit just after that shot or as the shot was being released on Duraclo. His speed is really impressive. And furthermore, a lot of players with that kind of speed don't use it on the backwards end. And he does it to back check on a very regular basis. Yeah, Caden Dubroy has been one of the most impressive uh, newcomers to the Voodoo's team this year. One of the first signings by Powassan last off season. There's a puck down the ice. Smetham got it to Rive. Rive threw it towards the net. And now Smetham battling far side. Shields gets to it. Still battling on the far side half wall. Smetham comes in, tries to will it out front of the net. Nearly got it to the net on a backhand chance. Now Ricci with it. Ricci in the corner. Twisting and turning. Threw it towards the net. That one's blocked by Nyman. Nyman slowing things down behind his net. We saw that a lot in the hurst Powassan series. Both teams just slowing things down. Now it's Cadio Frederick into Voodoo's territory. Took a shot, stopped by DiRocolo. Now it's out front, and the goaltender just calmly grabs with his glove and settles things down. And as we're seeing some fine glove action here out of both goaltenders, scooping them up off the ice, their casual glove saves. It reminds me that we're well under the way for baseball season, and you can catch baseball information on our 3-2 count podcast. Nice little plug there. Matt Sukram doing his part with the uh, keeping us up to date on baseball all season long. The Jays not off to a great start. Although after the offseason that they had where the uh, front office did absolutely nothing, can't say I'm surprised, as Ray Smith now down for McMillan. McMillan throws it towards the net. It hits a stick and goes wide. Thompson keeps it in. Only briefly, though, as Timmons is going to get the puck out now. Another chance. Thompson takes his man down. Ray Smith to the near side for McMillan. McMillan had Albert all over him, but he still somehow has the puck. Now he gives it away to Wells. Wells going in, takes a shot. DiRocolo stayed up and then immediately got out of the way as 
McLean and Wells were going in towards the netminder. Certainly as a goalie, when you see big bodies coming towards you like that, if you can afford to get yourself out of the way, you're gonna wanna. Yeah, we don't wanna see any injuries here this time of year for goaltending. Powassan does have three other goaltenders on its roster, all capable, Miles Gordon, Tyson Wilcox, and Patrick Charette, who we've yet to see suit up here in the playoffs. Him and Wilcox. I believe Charette is injured still. That's the latest I've heard on him, but that was in round one, the last time I heard anything on him, so. Oh, okay. Back to the point, Cadio Frederick takes the shot. That might have got to Duracolo. If not, it was blocked, as now Nyman keeps it in. Nyman, far side. MacArthur sends it around in for Wells. Now behind the net, Timmons picks it up, but it's back out to the point. Cadio Frederick, and it's blocked by Ricci on his shot. Puck to the near side. McMillan, or McElhaney, got it to the point, but not out. As now, Timmons once again with possession. Ring falls to the ice. Now McElhaney through the neutral zone. Stops up, throws the puck in. Turner chasing after it. Boivin nearly gave it away to him. Out front, oh, Patrick had it at the near side half wall, but he just couldn't get a shot towards the net. McElhaney up the ice for Turner. Now Patrick walking in. Ryan Patrick with the shot, stopped by Boivin. Now Turner, near side, throws it off the side of the net. And the puck still in Timmins territory as Clark twisting and turning gets away from Smetham. Clark twists and turns, decides to reset here for Timmins. As he wants to see his mates change up. Now Sefton with the puck behind the net. Poole, far side. As Boivin's gonna get off as there's a delayed penalty against the Voodoos and is touched up by Powassan. That's why Clark had turned around, tried to get Boivin to get off the ice. Yeah, there was some yelling from the bench going on and it almost looked like Boivin was waving them off because the puck was coming back into his own end and he didn't want to have uh, one of those misfortunate yep. own goals that we've seen a few of this year at the pro levels. But there's a couple particularly excited Rock fans in the building that made the venture down from Timmins. Yeah. Here to will their guys on as Timmins on the power play. Sent near side, Case gets to it. Sends it up for Russo, and Russo just sends it down the ice. Killing off very precious time. Cadio Frederick out to play the puck. Has Boivin stopped it up for him. Now it's up for Wells. Wells. Far side for Clark. Clark to the near side for, for Svarich. Svarich to the point for Cadio Frederick. Takes a shot, that was blocked by DiRocolo. Sent back to the point, good block there by Russo. But Clark comes away with it. Clark. That hit nearly had his pocket picked by Lemke. And now Lemke dives towards the puck and ties it up on the far side. Lemke gets it out. And now a chance for Powassan, but he's all tied up. As they would have had a two on one. And Shields looked to play the puck. It almost was offside. The linesman said it was at first and then he waved it off. Minute left here on the power play for Timmins. Sfarich now. With some speed into Voodoo's territory. Turner gets to it. As now, Case tries to get it out, but it's kept in by Timmons. Kelly to the point for Nyman. Nyman, Sfarich, in tight now. Cross ice, oh, they had a wide open net, but couldn't put it past Rockolo. Back to the point now, Nyman. Nyman, cross ice to Sfarich. Sfarich takes another shot, and that one's turned aside. And into the corner. Svarich, back to the point. Far side, good chance there. Blocked by Rotundo, and down the ice he goes. Now it's another two-on-one chance. Turner takes the shot. Rotundo on the doorstep. It's topped by Blovin. Now going the other way. Shields, five seconds left on the man advantage. And Powassan's able to kill this one off as we're back to five on five. Good chance for Mason Rotundo. As the Powassan faithful give a loud applause to the Voodoos. Now MacArthur back behind the net, sent it out front. That pass did not, or that shot was fanned on. Now Sefton with the puck at the point. Goes cross ice. That one's blocked by Rive. Rive nearly overskated the puck and lost it. Now Jackson Smith sends it in for Russo to chase after. Sefton stops up in his own corner. Sends it for Poole back to Sefton. Sefton, 
Down the ice now for a chance for Timmons. Near side, MacArthur with a shot. That one's blocked in front of Duracolo. Beard with another chance, sends it wide. Thompson picks it up, and he floats it down the ice. McElhaney with a chance, and Ray Smith with a chance. What a save by Blobin! Oh my God, Ray Smith with a gorgeous chance there. And an even better save by Patrick Wavin. That flip out of the zone by Thompson just landed perfectly for Wraith Smith. And he made a great move. And Boivin just somehow stayed with it and got his toe on it. Very big save by the goaltender. And we'll have to see more of that on the other side of our mid-period break here of the second period. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by Average Joe's Eatery. Average Joe's, where we want your experience here to be a happy one. 3501 Trout Lake Road. And we welcome you back inside the Powassan Sportsplex. Courtney Kenny, pleased to be joined by Ben Long here for game number three of this East Division final between the Powassan Voodoos and Timmins Rock. All added up at one apiece in this game. And the series is at 2 0 in favor of the Powassan Voodoos. After back to back overtime victories in Timmins, 3 2 in game one and two. Always good to see playoff atmosphere here at the Sportsplex. Shots on goal 20 to 20 between these two teams. Ray Smith just had a gorgeous opportunity to break the deadlock, though. McMillan in for the draw against Lowe. And McMillan just sends it towards the net. Now Thompson gets to it. Thompson. Back behind for McMillan. Back to the point, sent in by McLean. Now near side for Smith. Smith has an op over his stick case. Back to Smith. In for Thompson, Thompson. He's tripped up behind the net. Now he's battling for it as well. Sent out by Timmons. McMillan picks it up, but it's sent off his stick and now McLean picks it up. McLean behind his net with Beard all over him. Now Case down the ice for Smith. Smith with a nice pass to Thompson. Thompson into the slot, looked to take the shot and he had it roll off his stick and Boivin with the save as it rolled in slowly on him. That was a great break into the zone for Powassan. And unfortunately for Chase Thompson, it just rolled off his stick and instead of being able to get a better shot on it. 7.47 left in the second period. Again, all knotted up at one apiece. Russo battling for it in Timmins territory. Dawson in there as well as it's just held at the blue line. Powassan trying to will it deep into Timmins territory, but Timmins gets it out. Wells down the other way. Takes a shot to Rockalow, it's in his glove. And the goaltender stops it up. DiRocolo has really been fantastic this whole playoffs. And in some of these games, he's needed to be. And that's just a fantastic feeling for a team to have, knowing that you have some more talented offense, but you have a goalie that you can rely on when things get tight. Yeah, you know he has your back. That's the same thing with Timmons with Boivin as well. As Dubroy wills it down the ice, but Timmons picks it up in the neutral zone. And now, back down into Powassan territory. Ring with it. Ring for Wells, goes cross ice. MacArthur had a wide open net. He couldn't bury it. That's a few wide open nets now for Timmons in this game where they haven't been able to bury the puck. Sefton floats it towards the end boards and then Ricci sends it down the ice. Does it have the legs for icing? They say no and wave it off. Timmons with the puck behind their net. Under seven minutes remaining here in the second period. Now it's up for Kelly. Jack Kelly, the former Voodoo player, takes a shot, sharp angle, stopped by DiRocolo. Now it's flipped out of danger, but it's still in Voodoo's territory, and DiRocolo makes the save on the secondary chance by Timmons. There's been some real odd bounces of the puck today, and I'm not sure what's the culprit for it, but it's kind of warmer in the rink here than it usually is, so that might be contributing to some of those weird bounces that we're seeing. Yeah, gorgeous day today in the North Bay and Powassan area. Nine degrees outside right now. It's gotta be warmer than in here, of course. But it is still a little bit warmer as I'm pretty warm in my hoodie right now. Usually I'm a little chilly. As the puck knocked 
to the blue line, but not out of Voodoo's territory. Now a sharp angle chance kicked aside by DiRocco, and it doesn't get past the point either. Nyman kept it in. Now Anderson throws it towards the net, blocked by DiRocco, and Jackson Smith got it to Will Rive. Now Reese Smetham walks in. Reese Smetham in the near side corner, battling for it. It's on the near side half wall, and Armitage sends a cross ice for Kelly. Kelly gets it into Voodoo's territory. And Case picks it up. Case tried to will it down the ice. He got it to the red line and no further. As now Smetham gets to it and sends it into Timmins territory, but it's not in deep. Albert now collides with Ryan Patrick. Smetham picks it up. Smetham willing himself towards the net. Ryan Patrick with a chance. And that one just went wide. Patrick on the backhand. Turner with another chance as well. That one's just put aside the net off a save by Boivin. Now McLean with the puck on the far side in the corner. Skates around behind the net. Mike McLean out front. Turner couldn't get a shot away as he was checked pretty quickly. Now McLean with it once again. In the neutral zone. Wills it forward as he has quite the reach. Zach Turner goes cross ice. Was looking for McElhaney. McElhaney with the puck now at the blue line. Goes cross ice. As now Ricci gets to it. Ricci stopped up by Sparich though. And McElhaney picks it up in his own zone. Sending it cross ice. Lemke couldn't quite get to it. And Kelly just turns and fires it in. And Duracolo leaves it for Lemke. Now down the ice for Patrick. Patrick carries the puck in. Goes wide with it as he bounces it off the end board for Reith Smith. Near side. Sparich with it. Sends it in. McElhaney gets it to Patrick. Patrick was looking out front. Nobody was there as he hit the side of the net. Now McElhaney. Lost it and Sparich with the puck. Good chance here for Sparich. He throws it wide. And Wraith Smith picks it up. No. It's on the far side half wall as he battles for it. Can't quite will it past his man. On the far side. That's Romanuk on the far side. Shot goes high. Hand to the blue line but kept in by Cadio Frederick. Now down the ice. McElhaney gets to it. McElhaney. Takes a hit, makes the play, sends it in, and goes for a change. As Cadio Frederick gets to it. And it's sent in. Sparks got a stick on it, so no icing. Case sends it right back up. But now a no-look pass by McMillan. And it's kept in Voodoo's territory. Case behind his net. Clark's right there. Gets it down the ice, though, for McMillan. McMillan walks in. He has the puck hop off his stick. And now... Wells tries to will it back down into Voodoo's territory. Sefton picks it up at the red line. Sefton walks in, takes a shot to Rocklow with the save. And we'll get another stop here. 1-1 one, one with 3.33 left in the second period. Timmins leads 25-21 to 21 in the shot total. And that was a great shot by Sefton, a quick shot that he got off. I thought maybe that one was destined for the top corner, but Rocklow reached out that glove hand and said, not this time. No, as you mentioned, it's been a great goaltending matchup here all series long. Daniel DiRocolo doing his part in both Dryden Riley and Patrick Boivin on the other side. Battling for it off the faceoff. Russo got it back to McLean. He sends it down the ice. That one missed Dubroy. Now Poole with it. Poole near side. It's still kept in by the Voodoo's butt. Dubroy takes a penalty here. And that'll go for holding as Sefton gets up and says a few words to Dubroy as well. And Dubroy is going to be in the box for the next two minutes or less. That's certainly not what Poisson wants to be seeing with 3.19 left on the clock with a tied second period. You don't want to be giving them a chance right here to go into the third period up by one. No. <coughs> Apologies again for my coughing display here tonight. Boston can't be too worried being down with the way they performed in Timmins earlier this week, but you definitely don't want that at any rate. No, and off the draw quickly, Powassan sends it down the ice. Boivin out to play it, leaves it behind his net. Cadio Frederick picks it up. Wells through the neutral zone. Banks it in, Shields gets to it. Shields sends it down the ice, but not too far as Timmins is able to pick it up in the neutral zone. That's Clark now skating back into his own zone. Leaves it for Wells. Wells gets it to ring. Now it's left for Clark. Clark with a shot. 
And that one went well wide of the net. Sfarich back at the point. Tadio Frederic back for Sfarich on the near side. Sfarich to the point. Tadio Frederic skates the line. Finds Clark. Clark tried to feather it in and is sent down the ice by Russo. And now Cadio Frederick with a chance in his own zone as Voodoo's go for a change. Minute left on the man advantage, low. Fell over after Case got to him, but no penalty. Sfarich with another shot, and that one's off the glove of Duraclo and behind the net. Back to the point, Sfarich again, takes another shot, was looking for the tip for low, and now it's back to Sfarich at the point. Now low on the near side. Walks in, goes cross ice, no one was there as Timmons couldn't get a shot away. Now, Cadio Frederick back in for low. Low, lost it, now Shields gets it, chips it down the ice, and it's all the way into Timmons' territory, and is gonna go for a much needed change here. 20 seconds remaining on the man advantage, a minute 40 left in the second period. Now MacArthur, in near side, back to the point for MacArthur. Back to Nyman, MacArthur. Takes a shot, he picked his corner, and that one went high and wide of the net. Back for MacArthur. Takes another shot off the post. MacArthur, back to the point for Nyman. We're back to five on five. As DeBroy comes in out of the box and tries to steal the puck. Now a chance here, a couple of whacks at it for Timmons. And now back to the point for Nyman. Nyman, look to send it in, and now Lemke. Kowalski could have a two on one here, Lemke. Walks in, leaves it back for Patrick. Patrick with the shot, saved by Blavin. Rebound chance, backhanded towards the net by Lemke, but he couldn't quite get it on net. Now sent down the ice, Rotundo has to be quick with it. Sends it right back down, Romanuk picks it up, and now big hit leveled by Thompson. Patrick walks in, stops up, takes the shot, goes cross ice, Reith Smith had the puck on his stick for a second, and then it bounced away. Thompson. Back to the point for Rotundo. Rotundo just keeps it in. Sends it back around Thompson behind the net. Battles for it. Puck comes away. Timmons gets to it. 25 seconds remaining. Now a good chance here as Patrick picked up the puck, but it hit a body and went down into Voodoo's territory. So the Voodoo's have 15 seconds to play with here. Ricci. Near side. Rotundo with it. Wraith Smith with it at the blue line. Wills it ahead to McMillan. McMillan carries the puck in. Tried to get around his man. Five seconds left, battling for it again. Rotundo takes the shot, blocked by Timmons as Powassan was all over Timmons for that final minute and will look to ride the momentum after the intermission here into that third period. Again, 1-1 game here between the two combatants after Timmons scored early in the second. Shots on goal 29-21 to in favor of Timmons. Ben, before we go to our break, your final thoughts on the second period. Well, Timmons played a really great whole period. Puasa needs to shore up that discipline a little bit because they can't be giving Timmons advantages like that. But that last minute, that's exactly what Puasa needs to keep doing. That was probably the best they looked all period and they had a couple really good chances out of it. Great chances indeed. We'll have to see if they're able to continue that into the third period. But for now, we'll take a quick break and we'll be back with more on the other side of this intermission. I'm Courtney Kenny, he's Ben Long, and we'll be back with more. Average Joe's Eatery and Patio Bar is North Bay's only year-round lakefront restaurant. On the shores of beautiful Trout Lake, we have been serving delicious food and stunning views since 1999. Indulge in one of our delicious menu items or simply sit with a cocktail in hand and watch the beauty of Trout Lake before your eyes. Check us out online at averagejoes.net or visit us in person at 3501 Trout Lake Road, North Bay. Hey there, I'm Mike the Financial Advisor. When you strip it down to its core and you take away all the industry jargon, I help people solve financial concerns. So if you're concerned that you'll never save enough to retire comfortably, or that your kid is going to graduate post-secondary $40,000 in debt, or maybe even that life is going to take a really unfortunate sideways turn and somebody is going to have to open a GoFundMe page for you and your family. I can help you prevent all of those things from happening. If you want to see how, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Just do a search for Mike the Financial Advisor. You should find me. 
You rely on your vehicle to take you to the places that matter most to you. So bring your vehicle to the team you can rely on to keep it running at its best. Dave's Automotive Services. Whether you're getting your car or truck ready for the season with a tire change, making sure you're safe on the road with an inspection and certification, or doing your due diligence to keep your vehicle in tip-top shape with regular maintenance, Dave's Automotive Services has you covered. Expert troubleshooting, quality repairs, and time-efficient labor are the three stars of service you can expect when you bring your car or truck to Dave's Automotive Services at 411 Airport Road. Call 705-478-5544 and book your appointment today.
Meals are a special time for families to gather, share their day, and spend quality time together. Those dinners are made extra special when you add tropical produce found in the markets and grocery stores that carry La Huerta imports. La Huerta knows the importance of family, so they know which quality products make the best quality meals for your customers, whether it be Mexican Haas avocados, Brazilian figs, Ecuadorian red dragon fruit, or something just as exotic and special. To get your supply of the best tropical produce at competitive prices with brands buyers trust, contact La Huerta imports at 705-752-1478. Barry! Huh? I told you not to be scaring the customers. Hey, Barry! Come on in for a bite. And bring Brianna with you. Ready to embark on an electrifying adventure? Look no further than the Mitsubishi Outlander. Available in gas or PHEV, the SUV that redefines excellence. Recently awarded the best midsize utility vehicle in Canada for 2023 by AJAC. This bold and sophisticated SUV delivers advanced performance, safety, and tech, plus peace of mind with its standard super all-wheel control and the best warranty in the business. With red-hot deals and plenty in stock, your award-winning drive starts with the Mitsubishi Outlander. And we welcome you back inside the Powassan Sportsplex here. And as we get, we're set for third period of game number three. All knotted at one apiece between the Powassan Voodoo's and the Timmins Rock. Powassan currently holds a 2-0 series lead in the best of seven series between these two teams. And Timmins looking to have the lead and Powassan looking to take a commanding 3-0 series lead here in this East Division Final. If you're just joining us now, the game is 1-1 after 40 minutes of play. And again, I apologize for the amount of coughing going on right now as I'm battling through something. I had, Ben can attest I had no voice yesterday. So yeah. The fact that I'm even talking here and, and living off Wozniak's right now. Uh, the things that we suffer from are... are <laughs> right? <laughs> the tortured artist, Courtney Kenny. Yeah. Hey, you know what's wild? Not hockey related, but it was the 30th anniversary of Kirk Cobain's passing the other day. Yeah. That's pretty uh, pretty wild. I remember it like I was one year old. Yeah, <laughs> I bet you do. <laughs> um, yeah, no, 1-1 one, one here between the two teams. Timmons scoring last at the start of the second period, about 30 or uh, 21 seconds into the period. Uh, they had a quite the fast start there, and then nothing for the rest of the period. Between these two teams, Ben, uh, both team one and two going to overtime with a 3-2 victory for the Voodoo's in both games. What are we expecting here in this third, third and I don't want to say final period because we know that's definitely not the case. Yeah, it's not, not defined to be the final period for sure if any of the playoffs have shown history so far. But I think what we're going to expect is both teams are going to come out hard here. Timmins has outshot Boston 29-21 to so far. But I don't know if that's necessarily indicative of what the game has been so far. I think it's been a much more even game than that relatively close shot clock would indicate. And so, yeah, I think we're in just for a great third period here. But it looks like there's something wrong with the net as one of the linesmen is inside Poisson's goal. Dealing with a potential twine issue. Yeah, they got a referee and both linesmen down there now, but one linesman, like you said, was down in the net. Garoccolo came over to look at something and clearly didn't like what he saw, so he brought the linesman over. But now they're skating away. I think that they figured it out. Yep, the linesman made a gesture to the Blossom bench to say that he'd taken care of it, and okay, line up for the faceoff now. Let's go. Let's Back underway here. As we get set for this third period between the two teams, Timmons and the Road Whites are going left to right. Powassan and their home greens are going right to left in this third frame. Ryan Patrick sends it in deep for Russo. Russo behind that, threw it out front, hit a body and rolled in on Boavin. Now Turner took a bit of a header into the corners. He was looking for the rebound, but he's okay. Yeah, it was a bit of an awkward fall that Turner took there and it was Looked like he was pulled down by Cadeau for dead, I think that was. And 
but no call on the play. Let's line up for the next faceoff. Russo once again in for the draw against Harry Clark. Russo wins it back, but it's going to be Timmons for the first real possession of it off the draw. Down the ice, Romanuk sends it to the middle of the ice for Clark. Clark flips it up on over Patrick, and Duraclo kicked it into the corner. Now Patrick sends it around near side. Case gets to it behind the net, and Case sends it far side for Patrick. Patrick with a little spinorama in the corner. Has the puck roll away from him. Now McLean with it. Sends it down the ice. That should go for icing against Powassan. And it does. And now Turner going over to say something to his man. There was, there was a... That's the second uh, time a Voodoo's player's had a stick taken right out of his hands and no call. Yeah. Entirely unrelated to the play as well, both of those times. I'm sure the... The coaches have something to say to the refs, uh, but it looks like they're more just strategizing with players than anything. There was a missed call there that Powassan could have been called for in their own zone too, to be fair. That didn't go against the Voodoo's. Now we'll have to see how much the referees want to play a factor here in this third period. As the puck's down for Turner and he tips it in. No icing, they say, as Turner's the first in on it anyways. Turner scored the first goal of the game. Kavavudu's up one to nothing. On a nice pass by Mason Rotundo. Now it's out front, Boavin. Couldn't quite get a handle on it as that was a good chance there for Reese Smetha. Couldn't quite bury it though. And now the puck down the ice and with a good head of speed, they're gonna be able to get the puck. That's Wells, gets it away from Ricci before Wells sees the ice. Now Ricci battling for it. Smetha comes away with it, sends it around near side. Wells will get to it. Wells sends it towards the net. Ricci tipped it away. Now Ring sends it back to the point. Another chance here. Goes wide of the net. Sent back to the point. No. Shields picks it off and sends it down the ice. Now Poole gets to it. Sends it right back in. Rocklow tried to get a stick on it, but the puck was over it. Now a good chance here for Timmons, but there was no one quite ready to corral it. As Smetham sends it down the ice. Sent right back in to Rocklow. Gets a hold of it and covers it up. But the Voodoo's are swimming in their own zone a little bit too long on that. This has been a chippy third period so far. Lots of shots taken from both sides and the refs haven't seemed to pull their whistles out yet. But I would be surprised if they entirely let things get out of control and put their whistles right away because that plays as much of a factor as if they're making a lot of calls. Battle for possession behind the Voodoo's net. Jackson Smith come, tries to come away with it, but Beard gets to it. Now sent in. Low sends it towards the net. It's off the skate of Beard. And into the corner. Now Smith trying to chip it off the glass. And is off the netting and out of play. Now Smith and Beard get a couple of chances to talk to each other after the whistle here. These two teams, of course, rivals in the East Division. And they've met each other many times in recent years, and they've had some players who played with each other, so there's lots of familiarity. And if distance makes the heart grow fonder, familiarity is certainly doing the opposite here. <laughs> Tadio Frederick with a shot. Duraclo makes the save, and it's cleared away as he didn't quite see where the rebound was and sent down the ice. So Timmons now will get another offensive zone draw. And there seems to be lots of drawing back and forth between players, and the linesmen are being particular about making sure they're getting in the middle there so it doesn't get too far out of hand. McMillan in for the draw on the far side against Lowe. And Timmons wins it back. Nyman with it, trying to walk in. McMillan comes away with it, though. McMillan lost the puck in Thompson's feet. Now Thompson falling down, was able to get the puck into Timmons' territory, and it's underneath his feet. And it's kicked back in by the Voodoos, but offside, the linesman says. So again, another stoppage here. Lots of stop and go here after the first couple of minutes were wide open. Yeah, the, and the first few periods, we had not many face-offs. I think we may have had more face-offs so far than we did that whole second period. Voodoos once again without Alex Little here tonight and tomorrow night. In game number four. Armitage couldn't quite get to it as it's sent back down the ice by Powassan. 
Lemke gets to it in his own zone. Got it to DeBroy and it's down into Timmins territory. Albert with Dawson. Albert gets it to the near side though. And battling on the far on the near side half wall. Russo in there as well. Albert comes away with it. And is sent down the ice. Ricci gets to it. Ricci hits a skate on his cross ice path and Lemke just bats it in with his hand as Longhurst McIntyre gets to it. Behind his net, Longhurst McIntyre finds his man. Albert is sent down the ice, no icing. As Turner gets to it. Turner got it out of the zone, but not far enough. As Poole sent it right back in. Now Case to the near side for Turner. Turner sends it in deep into Timmins territory. It rolls in on Boivin. Boivin plays it. And the puck right back out to the neutral zone for Timmins. Timmins. Stopping past their man, but Patrick gets to it. Flips it right back in. Turner now with a chance. Turner walks in, takes a shot. That one's blocked in front by Sefton, or Poole rather. And the puck's still in the far side corner. Sefton gets to it, sends it around for Romanuk. Romanuk down the ice, down for Clark. Clark with some speed for the neutral zone. Lost the puck from McLean. McLean takes him to the ice. They're gonna call that a penalty against Powassan. And now Powassan will have to kill off the second straight penalty against him. As they killed one off late in the second period. And now Mike McLean will be in the box. I think this is his second time in the box this game. I believe so. I can't recall off the top of my head. But that wasn't a group. I don't know if that was a great call. It looked like Clark was more holding McLean's stick and then fell over because he wouldn't let go. But... Here we are at either rate. Powassan has two minutes that they want to kill off shorthanded. And then hopefully make the puck go the other way. Powassan has looked good shorthanded this game. And they've gotten some offensive time as well. But you don't want to keep giving a team like Timmins chances with the man advantage. As a puck in loose territory, still off the draw. Clark comes away with it. He's able, or no, he can't quite keep it in as no Cadio Frederick goes cross ice. MacArthur stops up, Svaric rather, sends it in deep, Lemke gets to it, and now Case is gonna be able to send it down the length of the ice. Boivin out to play it in his own zone. Leaves it for Cadio Frederick. As the Voodoo's line up at their blue line. Three across with Russo down the ice. Now back into Voodoo's territory, Wells spins and sends it back. Sparich in for Wells. Wells looking out front for Clark. Clark puts that one wide. Sparich. Cadio Frederick in for Clark. Clark takes another shot. That one's blocked by Powassan. Cadio Frederick from the point. Another chance there for Sparich is blocked. Alex Case with a couple of big blocks there. Now back in for Wells as he's twisting and turning. Gets it back to Sparich. To Cadio Frederick. Takes another shot, that one's over the net and on the back of the net. Now Lemke battling for it behind the net. 45 seconds remaining on the man advantage for Timmins. Clark looks to take a shot through traffic, but instead it's blocked by Russo and sent down the ice. 30 seconds remain on the man advantage now. Boivin took a big swipe at McElhaney. You've seen the Timmins goalies not too afraid to defend their blue paint there, looking like Ron Hextall in a couple of these games. Now Romanuk takes a chance, goes in, but couldn't quite get the shot away. MacArthur picks it up. MacArthur to Romanuk. Went cross ice, was looking back door. Kelly now with a chance. And Arakula with the big save there. With six seconds left on the man advantage. Big save on his former teammate, Jack Kelly. That was a huge play by Duracolo. And this has been a great power or penalty kill by the Voodoos. Timmons have done a great job setting up, moving the puck around, but every time they're trying to take shots on the net, it's just getting blocked by a Voodoos player. And that's exactly what you gotta be doing is putting your body on the line this time of year when you're in a tie game in the third period. Tis the season as the Voodoos are able to, Russo able to will that down the ice. And we're back to five on five hockey. Anderson to Kelly. Kelly taken out of the play by Lemke as Patrick sends it around the end wall. 
But now back to the point for Timmons. Off the end boards and out. Longhurst McIntyre's Russo gets to it. Tries to sit it down. He does. Turner throws it towards the net. And that one missed the net entirely and is back into the Voodoo's blue line. Jackson Smith down the ice for Shields. Shields tries to go around his man. He's taken to the ice. And that will be a delayed penalty against Timmons. So now Powassan will have a chance to respond to the power play of their own. And that was a clear trip right in front of the ref. ref. I don't know if he could have got away with not calling that one. <laughs> well, if he wants to get... Uh, so the referees have to go through the lobby here at the Sportsplex. Yeah. And if you want to get through the lobby... At you the want to the get game, home after the game, you got <laughs> to at least make a couple of those calls. Yeah, yeah. That one would be a tough one to walk through the lobby uh, afterwards if you didn't make that call. Yeah. Yeah, and the, the, the Boston friends are not afraid to be vocal of their opinion. They are not. That is one thing we have learned for sure. Cadio Frederick sends it around, far side. But it's kept in by Pawas and his McElhinney. Rims it around to McLean. McLean goes cross ice. McLe McMillan, his shot was blocked. Cross ice, now McLean takes a shot. That one's blocked by Boivin. Now it's McMillan with the puck. McMillan leaves it in tight for Patrick. Back to McLean. For Patrick, Patrick sends it around behind the end wall for McElhaney. McMillan gets it right back and sends it right back around. Patrick on the near side. Back to McLean. McLean takes a shot. Good tip there by Shields. And Boivin with the stop. 33-24, to 24, the shots in favor of Timmons. And this is exactly the type of power play that Poisson wants to be doing. Moving the puck very well. Getting some shots on the neck. Having bodies in front for tips and screens. But if Timmons is also doing a great job of killing that penalty, and Boivin's not going to do Poisson any favors at this point either. Uh, he's been he's a heck of a goalie, that's for sure. Lemke off the draw. It's one out front. Thompson in tight. Oh, big save by Boivin as now the puck goes around to Case on the far side. Case in deep now for Lemke. Lemke's pass nearly picked off, but Case picks it up. Case. Back to Smith. Smith with a chance. That one's blocked. And now a good chance to get it out, but they don't get it out very far is Timmons. Ricci carries it right back into his own zone. Beard gets to it. And now Case leaves it for Smith on a bit of a risky play there, but Ray Smith makes it work. Smith with a sharp angle chance. Thompson on the doorstep, but he couldn't quite get a handle on it. And now the puck down to Voodoo's territory with less than a minute left on the power play. Carson, Ricci with the puck up for Lemke. Lemke to Thompson. Thompson chasing after it. Cadio Frederick in the corner as well, but Lemke comes away with it. Lemke goes for a skate. Gets it back to the point, kept in by Ricci to Lemke. Lemke throws it towards the net, tipped on front by Blobin. Oh, and the goaltender turns around and stops the puck with 11.06 left on the clock. Patrick Blobin with a big save there. We've seen so many goals where Chase Thompson gets himself to that front of the net and just finds a way to get the puck home, and he's been in front a few times on this power play. Just hasn't managed to find the back of the net yet. No, Chase Thompson, he's a gritty player for sure, and he definitely likes that front of the net presence, like you said. Almost willed his way right to the front of the net with the play previous. And we have an undescript amount of time that's less than one minute. Yeah, it's kept down the ice by Timmons. And that probably will kill off the rest of this power play as Ricci's out to play it. Ricci looking for Smetham down the ice. Smetham looking for Thompson as the puck rolls in. And we are back to five on five hockey. 10.45 left on the clock here in this third period. Thompson and Boivin, both heavy competitors here, just looked at, stared down each other. Now Case with the puck for Thompson. Thompson, nice pass to Smith. Smith lost the handle on it though, as now the puck is knocked out of play by Timmons and we'll get a stoppage here, but Powassan will get an offensive zone draw. And Timmons won't be allowed the chance to change as the shot was directly off the Timmons player's stick and out. Wells in for the draw for his mates. Russo in for Powassan. Russo. Lost the draw, but it's kept in by Rotundo. No! The linesman says it got out. And so the next draw will come out into the neutral zone. 
Timmins gets the puck out of their zone for the faceoff and to change their line, so I'm sure they're quite happy with that call. 10.23 left here in this third period. 1-1. Timmins scored the most recent goal. Powassan got the goal scoring started in the first period. Timmins early in the second. Patrick as the All-American line is reunited here with McElhinney back out there. He had an injury scare in the first period, but he's good to go. Now Ryan Patrick sends it in near side and chases after it. Throws a hit. McElhinney couldn't quite get to it, and McLean took a swipe and lost it. Now Svars going the other way. Good chance there, but blocked by Case. It's now the puck back to Poole, and Poole takes another shot. Gloved down by Naracolo. 9.54 left here, a bit more jawing by McElhaney after the buzzer with his man. That's Mason Farage, but we'll have to find out more about that on the other side of this as we've reached our mid-period break on the front line. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by Average Joe's Eatery. Average Joe's, where we want your experience here to be a happy one. 3501 Trout Lake Road. Tonight's Three Stars is brought to you by Dave's Automotive Services, 411 Airport Road in North Bay. Expert troubleshooting, quality repairs, and time-efficient labor are the three stars of service you can expect from Dave's. That's right. We will have our three stars of the game coming up whenever this game ends. The last two home games here in the playoffs went to overtime. The last two games, period, in the playoffs went to overtime as well. But for us, our only two games that we called in the first round against Hurst both went to overtime, so... We would not be surprised if that is another fate in store for these two teams. However, I would like to go home at some point. I do work tomorrow. It'd be great if we could get out at a reasonable hour. <laughs> 9.54 left. Sorry, go ahead. Not that we won't go home and just be sending each other memes all night after that's that a, anyway. That's exactly what happens, yeah. It's true. Case throws it up far side. McElhaney chips it down the ice. Cadio Fredred in his own zone. Cadio Fredrett stops things up behind his net. And Clark gets to it. Now, Romanuk walks in. Romanuk knocked off the puck by Turner. And Clark nearly had a nifty move to get to the front of the net. Now McLean down the ice. Mike McLean wills himself towards the net. He's knocked off his feet. And McElhinney looked to go cross ice, but it was a little bit too hot for Patrick to handle. Turner throws it back towards the net. Now Patrick behind the net, out front, Turner! Backhanded towards the net, Boivin with the save. And another chance as the Voodoo's battle for it, but Timmons comes away with it. Clark looking to go down ice, that will go for icing here against Timmons. So Powassan will get another offensive zone draw. Almost 11 minutes gone here in the third at 9.02 left. And Sparks wasn't too happy with that. He thought there should have been an interference call as he was trying to get through to beat out the icing. He was held up momentarily by one of the defenders and that's just the way the game's played these days you can't be uh mad when your team does it when you don't get it called on you that's the way it goes that's the way she goes she says back to lemke lemke takes a shot and that one's blocked and out of play as romanuk took that one off the foot didn't look doesn't look very uh, comfortable on that one as he Skates back slowly to the bench as Timmons is now able to uh, change after that icing. Yeah, Romanek looks definitely like he's in a bit of pain there as he gets off the ice there. But he went, as soon as that shot hit him, he went down and was looking a fair bit of discomfort. Offensive zone draw here for Tucker Shields against Harry Clark on the near side. And Timmons is gonna be able to get that one down the ice. That should have legs for icing once again. It does, as Ricci gets there first. So we'll get another mm -hmm. offensive zone draw now for Powassan once again. And the Timmons bench was not happy about that as they yet again are not able to change. Neither is uh, Powassan on this one apparently. It must have taken too long to decide on if they were gonna change their guys. Powassan does have the home, last change here because they're the home team. Back to Lemke. Lemke with a shot kicked away by Boivin. Now Clark in the corner. Gets it to Longhurst McIntyre. And he sends the puck down the ice. 
Coming in now into Voodoo's territory. Sparich was offside. No call coming there with Beard. Now on the near side, low. Got it around the end wall, but Reinhardt comes in and keeps it in. Far side, Timmons with possession. A little bit of confusion here in the Voodoo zone. Rive able to disrupt a pass. As Rive got it to the red line, sends it in, and then chases after it. Albert with the puck. As Lowe blows a tire. Now Beard with it, goes cross ice. Rotundo goes in with Reiner. Rotundo battling with Reiner. Tries to get to the puck, but it's picked away by Timmons. Timmons, low with it. Sends it in for Reinhard. Reinhard, back for Lowe. Lowe has Jackson Smith all over him. As the puck, still battled in the far side corner. Now McMillan gets to it. McMillan looks to go cross ice for Ray Smith. That one misses him. And he's going to have to chase after that one, and that's going to go for icing. Smith had a bit of a complaint there, but it's going to fall on deaf ears here as the Timmons Rock will get an offensive zone draw. I think the refs made the right call there. It's as the, when they cross the hash marks, who's looking like they're going to get first, and Smith, although he passed them after the hash marks, when they got to the hash marks, the Timmons player was in the lead towards the puck. McMillan in for the draw with Kelly. It's battled and tied up there as Timmons keeps it in Voodoo's territory. Back for Thompson. Thompson looked to go cross ice, but he hits Anderson with his pass. Now Timmons going the other way. Anderson scores! Beating Garoccolo from the point. Anderson put it over his glove. And that's his second of the playoffs. Two to one, Timmons with 7.17 left. And that one's a gut punch for the Poiss and Voodoo's. They got lots of time to come back and tie that up still though. But the Timmons bench definitely erupted after that one. That was a shot that I thought, you know, wasn't too much of a dangerous chance, but did end up finding its way to the back of the net. Poiss no stranger to coming back in this playoffs as they did in games one and two. Reese Smetham with it. Down the ice for Will Rive. It's off his stick. He's going to battle for it. No icing there as he was able to get to it first. Shields. Back to Case. Case sends it right back in. Wasson hasn't had much offensive zone pressure in a while. We'll have to see if that goal lights a fire under them or not. Shields. It's out for Smetham. Smetham puts it wide of the net. Back for McLean. McLean. Looking back in for Smetham, it hops over his stick. And now, Timmons will have possession and get out of the zone. Case, chasing after it. Up the ice, no voodoo player could touch it or else it would be too many men. Now Longhurst McIntyre sends it in and it'll go around the end boards. Case gets to it. Near side for Dubroy. Dubroy goes cross ice, chasing after that now is Albert. Dawson tried to get to it behind the net. Lemke, back from the point, takes the shot. Rebound was there. And now, Boavin takes a swipe at Dawson after the whistle. And like I've said earlier in this game, he's showing off his inner run Hextall. Yeah, that's a couple times where he said, that's, that's my space, you're not allowed to be here. And Although, to be fair, when you're behind the net, like yeah. you did with McElhaney earlier, you're, that's, free, that's fair game. But, you know, goalies are protective of their space. But either way, yeah, that was a swipe, and that's a few of those he did. Dawson did make a play for the puck, but it wasn't after the whistle, and it wasn't malicious by any stretch of the means. Back underway here. Timmons with possession. Nyman gets it down the ice. Ricci. Blind pass back. is picked off by Timmons. Now coming away with it once again. Timmons has possession. Clark. Takes another shot, blocked aside by DiRoccolo. And Turner gets to it with McElhaney. McElhaney underneath his stick as the puck comes back to Clark. And Clark sends it down the ice for Romanuk. But Patrick gets to it. Patrick tried to will it in past the blue line. Lemke's finally able to get it in as Patrick had overskated it. Lemke. Taken to the ice. Back to the point for Patrick. Wraith Smith battling for it. Gets it in for... 
Patrick, who tried to backhand it towards the net, couldn't quite find the net though. As now it's back for McLean. McLean sends it right back in. Patrick onto it. Patrick throws it towards the net. Boivin gets to it. And he's going to cover things up as McLean and Cadio Frederette were new acquaintances as well. 5.05 left here. 2-1 to one Timmins. Yeah, Plawson's doing a great job of putting that pressure on that they need to do. They have five minutes left here to try and even up the score and send this one to overtime as they've done many, uh, many a times before in this recent playoff, this series and the previous one. McMillan in for the draw for Powassan. He wins it. Wraith Smith tries to get to it, but he's knocked off the puck and is kept in by Queso. Thompson chasing after it. He's held on to. As now McMillan gets to it, sends it right back. Albert's going to be able to get it around the net. No. It's actually out of play as it hits the netting. So we'll get another stoppage here with 450 left. And that was shot directly off the Kimmins player stick, so they're not allowed to change. And Poisson elects not to change as well. Well, they've got their big horses out there right now. As the puck sent down the ice, Beard and McLean in a foot race for it. McLean got to it first, but Timmins was right there with the second man. Now the referee takes a bit of a tumble. Well, he's down and hurt. Quite the tumble there indeed. Don't like to see that. Oh, and the trainer jumps right out on the ice. Braden Haas out there talking to the referee. I think he took a high stick. Stick, or maybe when he fell, he fell into something, but... Well, he, he's grabbing at his face with the towel. Yeah. And you never want to see that. 4.34 left here in this third period. Timmins leads Powassan 2-1. Shots on goal 35 to 29 in favor of Timmins as well. You certainly can't say Duraclo hasn't done his part, turning aside 33 of 35 shots thus far. I'm sure that one he would like to have back, but you can't expect perfection out of these guys. They're still developing players. And Referee's gonna skate towards the Voodoo's bench. No, he's gonna go off the ice actually. So they'll have to move on with one less referee in this one. I don't know if he's going to get a quick stitch or something. and Or maybe a, a spot or two of glue on a cut to hold it together. We'll have to see what happens, but they close the door. It looks like, it looks like they're ready to go, but they're still kind of taking their time here. Again, 4.34 left here in this third period. Tim is just scoring Jack Anderson with his second of the playoffs. Still looking at the referee as the refs go and talk to both benches here. Well, there's, there's lots of red on the white towel that the referee's been holding against his face. It looks like he's getting... Either a couple stitches put or something being done. Good to see it not on the ice because then you'd have to come up and clean the ice and yeah. all that stuff. Another delay. The other referee's now off checking things out as well. It's a dangerous job being a ref out there. You don't have the full protection as the rest of the players do. No, you don't. It's not a job I would like, that's for sure. I, I would not take it as well. As a teenager, I considered doing some refing as a part-time job and decided, no, you know, that's, I don't think that's for me. <laughs> I used to umpire baseball when I was a teenager. That was one of my first jobs, actually. And uh, I spent one weekend volunteering for a tournament here locally, and I was on the field for 12 hours yeah. in the hot July sun. Yeah, that'll, uh, that sounds like heat stroke waiting to happen. Yeah, I was, the thing that sucked too was I had the house to myself that weekend and then I was stuck at the baseball field for, oh. and as a teenager, that's like gold, right? Like you yeah. get the house to yourself. That's what you're waiting for as a teenager. Yeah, and then here I was at the ball field uh, all day long. I will have to say Jacob Brown, not the goalie, his dad, Kirk, uh, came and brought me some McDonald's and some Gatorade because he was one of the coaches that day and he's like, you're here all day? I was like, 
Yep. And there was a few games I had to umpire by myself that day, too. Ooh. And you just, well, what you do is you just stand behind the mound. And you call the balls and strikes from there. But as it looks like we're going to get back. The referee coming back out and he gives a wave to the crowd. So, yeah. And then, of course, you have to face all the parents who don't like your calls. And yeah. Nothing at, like, this level, of course, that I had to do. But, yeah, no, I, uh, I umpired for about two years and... That was about it for me. Yeah, that's fair enough. Take a lot of abuse behind home plate, too, with some foul balls. As now we're back underway. Ring with a chance on a wraparound. Will Rive battling for him, but puck is on the near side wall now. 4.20 left here in this third period. McLean battling with his man behind the net. Puck comes away. Case is in there as well. 2-1 to one, Timmons leads. Four minutes. Time is the enemy now for Powassan. They are able to score a couple of goals with the goal he pulled in game one. As Tim is just holding on to the puck. And finally it comes away for Smetham. Smetham gets it to the red line. Sends it in. And Shields will chase after it with Cadio Fredrette. Now coming away with it is Timmins. Getting it out of the zone quickly is Clark. Clark gains the blue line. Stops up, turns around, giving away to Lemke though, and Lemke sends it right back down the ice, but no one was there. So Nyman sends across ice to Stefton. Now Beard walking in. Beard with a chance, stopped by Duracolo. 3.30 left here on the clock. And Powassan getting next to nothing in offensive zone time after the long delay. No, Timmins has really had control since that whistle. And I'm sure Powassan's just waiting to get down the other end. I don't think he'll be too much longer before Duracolo possibly gets called to the bench as well. 3.31 left here in this third period. And the Voodoo's win the draw. Lemke gets to it first, up for Turner. It's not out of the zone, as Powassan's had struggles all game with that. Low takes another shot off the foot of Duracolo. And Turner finally gets it down the ice, but not into the possession of anybody in green. Timmons, Beard gets it back through the neutral zone, sends it right back in. As now Patrick with the puck. Patrick goes cross ice for Ricci. Ricci is looking down the ice for Lemke. It hit a stick, so no icing call coming. Less than three minutes left. Patrick battling for it as it's kept in into Timmons territory, but Timmons has had all the possession here. Now it's down the ice for Lowe. Lowe has a step. Lowe comes down. Big stick by McElhaney to knock the puck away from him. And then McElhaney takes quite the header in the corner. McLean slowing things down, carries it out front of his net as he twists and turns through the neutral zone. McLean takes a sharp angle shot, Boivin with the stop. And we'll get a, night, we'll get a stoppage here, an offensive zone draw for Powassan with 2.27 left here in the third period. That was quite the play by McLean to take the puck all the way down the ice and get an odd angle shot that Almost looked like it handcuffed Poivin, but he managed to just hold on to it, and there was no further play. Thompson in for the draw. Tries to win it, but Timmons gets to it. Kept in by Ray Smith, though, and now sent out of the zone. Lemke up the ice for Thompson. Thompson tried to chip it over to Smith, and now it does come out of Timmons' territory. Thompson carries it back in. Duracolo still in his net as Thompson tried to throw it out front and is turned away. Now McMillan trying to slap it in. Couldn't quite get it there. Now it is in deep for Timmons. Thompson sends it around behind his net. Still no movement from Duracolo. Thompson sends it back to Lemke at the point. Lemke's shot is blocked. And now MacArthur nearly had a chance to go to the, to the races. And now it'll be an icing call against the Voodoos. Again, time is not on Powassan's side here with a minute 43 left. As we've talked about ad nauseum, I feel on our last few bro our last broadcast and on the after act reports as well, Powassan has been lethal in overtime. But you got to get to overtime to take advantage of that. Well, it'd be nice to see them do it in regulation too. Yeah. As McMillan, we probably won't see this line come off the ice here for the final minute and a half. Thompson can't quite get into the zone as Clark keeps it in. It's almost ridiculous how well Timmons is playing with the puck right now. Clark 
Walks in, takes a shot, blocked by Naracolo. And a big juicy rebound there, turned aside. Now McMillan wills his way in. McMillan couldn't quite get past his man. Has a couple of bodies lined up now. Taracolo to the bench. Sent down the ice by Timmins. And that's going to be how it ends here. Three to one, Timmins with a minute seven left. A bouncing puck into the, into the net. And it looks like Taracolo's being kept on the bench. So Pawson's saying this game isn't over yet. We're still going for it. But two goals in the last minute, seven seconds, is going to be a, a, a tough task. Wow, well, all the fans from Timmins definitely made the right choice coming down here. Three to one. Likely going to cut into the, the series lead for Powassan. Two to one, the Voodoo's will lead after tonight if the score stays the same. And uh, game four will go tomorrow night. Has another chance right off the faceoff, knocked in by Timmins, but wide of the net. Case with it. Now Mc, or Lemke with it. Lemke down the ice. That one's blocked as he looked for the stretch pass for Patrick. Shields picks it up, and Shields walks in. Now Case walks the line. Case tried to will it back front, out front. Now Case gets to it. Case, sharp angle, Boivin with the stop, takes another swipe at a Voodoo's player. As now we're gonna have a bit of a war of words here after the whistle and a couple of pushing and shoving as well. Looks like there's gonna be some calls made here. The ref's pointing towards a couple players. I don't know who's gonna get calls, but I imagine they're gonna call something just to tell guys settle it down now. 42.4 seconds left on the clock. Three to one Timmins leads. Wasson currently up two nothing in the best of seven series. It's going to be Patrick and Ring in the box. Offsetting Miners for roughing, I assume. As now we're going to get a timeout. I don't know which side. I think Timmins probably took it. Oh, no, Powassan probably took it. I would guess Powassan. They were all gathered around before the Timmins players came in. So I would suspect they're the ones trying to draw up a play here with less than a minute left to get Tim a shot on. Timmins very likely to skate away with a three to one victory here. And or or some close variant of that. And that'll make our series, like I just said, two games to one. Yeah, we definitely need to get this broadcast booth uh, sectioned off here. Yeah. Gotta love it when people just come and stand right where I'm supposed to stand. Yeah. Maybe just hand them the headset and say, here, I yeah, guess you you're- wanna, You wanna call the game? Guess you're the play-by-play -play now. Yeah. By all means, call the game. 42.4 seconds left on the clock. Again, the clock is against Wasson here. Shields. In for the draw. Wins it back, but it's kept in by Lemke. Lemke sends it in for Ray Smith, and it's off his stick. And that'll do it here again. Four to one, Timmins will take the victory. 32.9 seconds left as they send it down the ice. And Garoppolo's going back to his net now. So tomorrow will be game four. Powassan looking to go up three to one in the series. Timmins looking to tie it up. Yeah, Powassan definitely felt really good coming back after two road games with two wins. They'll feel less good going into tomorrow having have that lead cut in half instead of expended, extended. Shields in for the draw. And Jackson Smith gets to it. 30 seconds left. Powassan will want to capitalize on something, anything here to show some life. They haven't shown any life since the Turner goal in the first period. Throw across ice is Rotundo. Now it's Shields with it. Shields. Battling for it on the far side, McMillan gets to it. McMillan walks around, looks for a chance. Five seconds left, the puck comes back to the point. Smith with a shot blocked, and that'll do it here. Again, Timmons with the victory. And the Timmons fans happy to see that. As they basically fell down 2-0. I don't think any Rock fan anticipated that, that Powassan would come up and take both games in Timmins, and then Timmins coming down to Powassan, winning their game here. So far, the road team's a perfect 3-0 in the series. That's uh, 
Yeah, that's an odd stat to see, especially in playoff hockey, but that's where we are now. Series is two to one in favor of the Voodoos. Remember, it's the first to four. So uh, you had to kind of, as much as you might feel good if you're Powassan coming into this game, again, the job's not done. You still have two wins to go and get. No, and they've both been, they've all three have been really close games despite it being a four to one score. The fact that two of them were open net goals, it was essentially a two to one game. So they won by one in a couple games and lost essentially by one in the other game. Well, you'll have to hope to get some more offense from Powassan tomorrow. Again, they look very lifeless after the Turner goal to go up for uh, one nothing in the first period. And then Timmons was able to get a quick one in the second. And then an innocent looking shot by Anderson right over the glove of Duracolo in the third period gave them the edge. And Powassan was never able to mount anything after that. Not really getting any offensive zone time. No, it just kind of seemed like all their will to drive forward just kind of was gone, and they felt like they were just going to sit back. But you can't you can't only score one goal against a team like Timmins. No, there's no way that that works. I mean, against almost any team, you well, can't you can't get away with that. We'll quickly do our three stars of the game here. You got to give one, I would say, to Boivin. I think you got to give one to uh, Anderson. I think you got to give one to Duracolo. I think point. that's that's a pretty fair call. Also, a uh, super special shout out to the lady who gave us some butter tarts and won't tell us who they came from. The, they were came with well, a nice card with it that was signed Hockey Jima. Yeah. So huge thank you on that one. So whoever Hockey Grandma is, we we appreciate you very much. Yeah, you did a great job. We really appreciate that for sure. Uh, that being said, or that being said, also another huge shout out to uh, the gentleman who, for the last minute, wanted to stand where I'm calling a game and basically bumping into me every five seconds. So I just want, I didn't get your name either, but I just wanted to give you a special shout out on the broadcast. It says you wanted to be a part of it so badly, apparently. And the. Uh, Three stars were, as you predicted, DeRocolo at three, Boivin at two, and Anderson at one. Well, there we go. All right, that'll do it here for this broadcast. That's the end of game three. It's a 4-1 victory for the Timmins Rock. I'm going to go and not talk for the next day. Yeah, we're at rest that voice until you have to come back tomorrow and talk a whole yeah, lot again. Drink a lot of tea tonight. Drink a lot of tea tomorrow at work. For Mike Brown, our wonderful camera operator. Happy birthday. It's always Mike's birthday here at the Sportsplex, although it's a bit better when the Voodoo's win. Uh, and Cassie, our wonderful intern, for helping set up the broadcast here tonight. Harrison for getting all the great social media content, and Ben Long, our color commentator. I'm Courtney Kenny, and as always, keep your eye on the front line. Why is Northern Honda servicing more cars of all makes and models? Let's count the ways. One, our state-of-the-art facility has award-winning technicians. Two, Northern Honda has the lowest tire price guarantee, no matter what you drive. Three, the lowest synthetic oil change guarantee, and every fifth oil change is free for all makes and models. Plus, new Honda buyers get brake pads for life. See the service difference at Northern Honda, 1250 Seymour, beside Home Depot. Community engagement is one of our core focuses at McDonald's. The key is finding the right people who are passionate about the same things we are, helping kids be kids. McDonald's proudly supports local organizations such as the North Bay Regional Health Center Foundation, Big Brothers Big Sisters, One Kids Place, the Children's Aid Society, and Ronald McDonald House Charities. Stop by McDonald's on 1500 Fisher Street, North Bay to see how we can serve you and the community every day.